Good morning. We good have day. To, my name is Samuel F. Robinson, and from time to time, I do interviews with business owners for the benefit of the business owners. You on YouTube, you on Instagram, and you on TikTok. Yeah. And King West is going to introduce himself. He's going to tell us a little bit about his background before we get into this exciting word that I'm just now learning. I'm, I, I'm probably the only one who doesn't know this word, Bajali. But we're going to get into that in a few, and then we're going to tell you how it benefits you. First of all, tell us a little bit about your background and how you backed into this. Mm, I know. Uh, the universe have a, has a way of moving us around, you know, has a way of, of, you know, us going through a certain path so we can have some lessons, some knowledge, education, and wisdom. So ultimately, you know, you, you get lead, you know, led into some, to a place where you realize, oh, okay, uh, is this my passion, talking? And, you know, so you run with it because you get excited with it, and, and it feels great in your heart that you are starting to do something with more more of a purpose. And I've always been about helping people. You know, the, one of the first companies that I started was a company called Life Designers. And Life Designers is an organization uh, that I proudly had with my brother, where we help people organize their um, finances, you know, gave them financial literacy and put them in position to acquire more wealth than they had. So if somebody wanted to go, um, you know, get some, you know, go get a car or get loans and lines of credit to start a business, fund a business, or to simply buy a home, we put them in position to win. And a lot of the people that I was working with are, you know, were entrepreneurs, you know, hustlers who were looking for capital to do just that. And I positioned them, acquire what it is they were trying to acquire. It's basically about helping people. From New York, you know, a space where people are moving, thriving, shaking and baking. And there's a lot of opportunities there for an organization like mine and doing what I was doing. And of course, three years ago, I landed in Florida. And I realized that people here didn't have the same mindset. I had to take a, a, a turn with my business and how do I, you know, how do I go about marketing to the people here? And doing my research, I realized that a lot of our people here are asleep. You're either working hard or retired, but ultimately you don't have a, you know, it seems like the people are not looking for the time to do more things because they feel like they are stuck in that time, time frame. No, no other way of going about doing other, doing anything, even thinking about, about a business. And I realized people are stuck in this matrix matrix and it seems like it's a forever thing. You know, you're going to grow old and, and, that, and that's it. I mean, nothing really has, been accomplished and what do we what do you, what did we do to leave something behind for our family children we're just passing down i don't know if we're even passing down tradition anymore i think we're just passing down the way we do business whether it's traumatic whether it's a uh, hardship uh we the only thing that we're passing down it seems like is these things uh, we're not necessarily passing down wealth we're not necessarily uh, necessarily passing down opportunity so when I got here, I told myself I needed to meet, meet a thousand people, you know, shake a hundred hands and, and build my network. And, you know, I had to find my tribe basically. So, you know, I found my tribe, I did what I needed to do. And then I realized that there was a crab in a barrel mentality here in Southwest Florida, but it seems like that that's a mentality everywhere for black people. And, and I think it's, due to the way that the system is set up to have us be separated, not necessarily communicating with one another. Um, we've been programmed to uh, see us a certain way. Everybody see us a certain way. And, and nowadays there's, um, there's a lot of things going on where um, it seems like they're coming after us. And if we have the mindset that we not just regular people, we are prisoners of war and, and they don't give, people that have that kind of status opportunities. And I don't think they will ever, it will ever happen because, you know, we scream reparations all the time and nothing has happened, but you see it happening for all the other groups, the Asians, you know, whether it's uh, Spanish or Jews, Jewish, you see everybody getting their fair share. So because of that, I realized that um, no one savior is going to come to do that, to save us, um, not even God. So I believe that we need to do it ourselves. We need to rely on ourselves. Um, uh, the way we need to go about this is to know that we are able to do something for ourselves. Whatever we can do for ourselves, we can probably do for others. But we have to position ourselves to do that. Um, and I and I decided to say, you know what? No one's going to come and do it for us, not even for me. 
So individually, I have to take that responsibility. And that's how Be Jolly Nation uh, became about because when I was doing the life designers, our slogan was beyond just living or beyond just living. So I just broke that word down, that statement down or that phrase to be jolly. And when you say the word be jolly, it sounds like you're saying be happy. Oh, I love that. And, <laughs> you know, so, so with that concept, I feel like it can resonate uh, with people, but how do you grab, uh, galvanize people and bring them to your table? All right. We're going to get into that. So you're a family man. Yes. And you tell us a little bit about how your family supports you in your endeavor. I have, I have a wife, I have two boys, uh, 11 and eight. So when you have people that relies or depend on you, be a father, to be a husband, and to be someone they can follow, look up to, and ultimately see that there's an opportunity for survival or even or to even thrive when they see you are able to be successful in what you do. So as far as family being supportive, of course, uh, I wouldn't be able to do uh, more or have access to the opportunities of being able to touch, you know, touch people or shake hands if I didn't have some form of support, because, you know, if you alienate your family and you're just going full force about what you're trying to do and you're not being mindful of some of the damage that uh, that could be collateral damage that could be done because you're not showing um, um, a space where you can be with them. You know, your focus can't solely be about that because yeah, you may get the success, but when you look behind you, there's no one there to sh share with. With, so I have to find a balance somehow, and and I'm still and I'm still working on it. <laughs> hey, uh, hey. It's a struggle, but exactly what you mean. But my passion is is alive and kicking. Uh, there are going to be roadblocks, things put in our place to deter us from doing what it is that we feel like uh, is our purpose or could be our purpose. And I think not even family can stop that train sometimes. But yeah. you still have to be mindful. Do you agree or disagree that life happens for you, not to you? It happens. I th yeah, I think it happens for you. And you know, we all have a, uh, a will. You know, we have free will. And, and we make decisions. If I choose to go left and get hit by a car and land in the hospital, and then I'm in the hospital, I have an epiphany. Next thing you know, I have the greatest idea to, to do something greater once I'm out of there. That could be the direction, uh, the space and opportunity and time to reflect and to do that. Maybe that was a blessing. I can go right and gone all a bunch of success, money, but um, but somebody takes me out once I do that. So you you know, I think life happens, and maybe you maybe you get to a certain point where you pass the baton because somebody uh, felt your energy and uh, gravitated to you, was inspired by you. Even when you're gone, you're still here. I got so, it. So. So I move in that way where it's like, um, it's not necessarily a fear. Um, whatever's going to happen to you is going to happen to you because um, my belief is I don't control the outside forces, uh, the external powers that be. The only thing I have control of is me. So I'm going to do me. And hopefully whatever that's within me could be without, and I can showcase that energy and, and hopefully be a blessing to us all. So you move from New York with a thriving business, arrived in Florida and, re and realized that the individuals had a different mindset. They're either asleep, they are either, what was the other two? You said they're asleep. Working too hard, they're asleep, um, retired, or working too hard. Or working too hard. And so you, you pivoted and out of that birthed a new business. And so that's how you arrived at the Jolly by taking the slogan and narrowing it down into one word, which it comes across as an African word, an African tribe, and it, it gives that sound. Of course, this is a creation of your own. For the business owner who's watching, they're asking themselves, okay, what is Bajali and why do I care? How well, do you respond to that guy? Okay, so... And I started the Kingdom Press too. Uh, the Kingdom Press at KingdomPressNews.com is a medium that I started to be a hub to, um, you know, bring awareness to what's going on in the community, what's affecting us negatively or positively, and also to create an opportunity for me to interact with other entrepreneurs who are looking to get a support of, of empowerment, of just having a space to network with each other. And that, you know, that allowed me to uh, meet a lot of people and be respected in the community. 
Um, so the word kingdom of the kingdom press is, I believe every household is a kingdom, but I believe also that more for the most part, all of our kingdoms is in shambles. And somehow we need an opportunity. We, we need we need resources to combat that, to uplift us, to, to rebuild our kingdom. And if we can build our kingdom individually together, uh, that is what I'm looking to do. So the idea of the Bijali Nation is to be the embodiment of that kingdom where you can come in and rebuild yourself, rebuild your family, rebuild your tradition, or rebuild um, you in general. And it's it's a space where, you know, we have um, opportunity to succeed in business individually, whether it's through financial literacy, um, credit, putting you in a position to establish yourself. But we also believe that we need a formula for most people who don't have a direction to follow. So whether it's, um, you know, creating a trust, you know, establishing yourself with cash value life insurance and and putting you in a position of empowerment where you can do more for yourself. Instead of working with the bank, you work with yourself, you become the bank. So if we have that kind of strategy within uh, Bijali, along with some guidance, instructions like the our constitution does, because I have developed a constitution, I call it the Black Constitution. And it's something that's actually being resonated online via social media, uh, specifically on TikTok. And a lot of people are asking me more about it. I have since, you know, the time that I launched it, which was last month, uh, I've since completed it. You know, I had article up to article five and I have uh, 15 articles and I've attached those, uh, that constitution into an ebook, which is, uh, which is called The Last Nation to Build. Which which is will be coming out uh, next week. I will basically re release it. I'm thinking of doing two parts: the just give away the Black Constitution that people um, have access to it, um, but also they can buy into the ebook to support us, to donate to us, and to you know uh, further us along in our cause. So that's where I'm at right now with Bijali. You know, beyond just living, because being a part of this nation, you can actually go beyond just living. So I heard two things a while ago. One is you're making sales. Going back to, before I get into how does it make the sales, going back to the beginning of what's in it for me as an individual, what's in it for you as the, as the person listening on the other side of this camera. When it comes to what's in it for me, somebody knocks on your website or they call your number What's the first step for somebody and what do they expect to get? I, I heard you mention financial literacy. I heard you mention uh, access to, to credit. What's the first thing that they can expect interacting with you? And is that free or paid? Um, no, it's, it's, it's a free thing. When I say it's a free thing, uh, for us to connect, be with each other, trust each, uh, give us space and opportunity to trust one another and to understand that we all uh, and it to win it uh, the same way. We all have this. Uh, we all share the same pain point. Um, you know, whenever you uh, think about what's going on, the atrocity that's going on in our community, where whether it's police, whether it's a hanging, it's going on in the state, uh, sun downtown, and people are taking advantage of us, and we have nobody to turn to. Um, so if I can create a space where people can actually turn to us to um, help them fend for what's right. And and shut certain things down. It's only a matter of time before we get to that point where we can do that. But before we get there, and we have our own militia, uh, before we get there, let's create wealth. Let's sustain ourselves. Let's uh, be business oriented. Let's educate ourselves. And there will be room and opportunity to do all that within the nation of Bijali, because that's the whole thing. You have to um, become wiser uh, by uh, experience, knowledge education and learning from one another and and we all can come into a place and build it together but right now we have no place to go so if people see uh, um, uh, inspiration through me opportunity to, through me uh, they can become that person and eventually do the same thing for others in their circle okay I heard militia and my mind went to Black Panthers uh, POW is this, how would you compare this 
organization to other organizations out there? What makes it different? Um, this is more energetic consciousness and, you know, bringing the collective, you know, in one place to just move and create a frequency higher than anyone can ever think about touching. It's a vibration. Um, it's not necessarily having a land, a uh, place of business where people can actually, you know, outside haters can actually come and destroy. Got it. Like they did to, like they did in Tulsa, you know, Black Wall Street and a bunch of other communities that we have created in America that they decided to burn down because they didn't want to see us thrive or succeed. At some point, it'll be ine inevitable for us to have our own space. When you think about what's going on with, you know, the opportunity that the Jews had in 1948, where they gave them their own state. Of course, that was at the detriment of, of another state, the Palestines, and they slowly got pushed out, uh, being pushed out over the years, and then getting closer and closer to really uh, cleansing the entire population. And eventually, you know, these people will be wiped out. But if we can acquire something like that, not to say that's what we're trying to do, but they have power. They have supreme power. So if we can create a nation that can be respected on the international level, where we can have a conversation with a person like Putin, with um, you know uh, Ibrahim Traim of 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 Burkina Faso, and we have, and the only reason we are able to do that is because we have the numbers, right? And there's people that that here in America that have their own nation of 27, 30, 40, 50 people that we don't know about, but they have a, they actually have an establishment. I want to, of course, we'll start small. But um, ultimately, it can lead in the, it can lead in that direction. Where imagine, you know, you have uh, several acres of land, hundreds of acres of land, thousands of acres of land, and but you put you set it up in a way where you protect you are protected via the international laws, not the national laws, but via the international laws. Because if you are solving, you are protected by, you know, by your solving team. So question. How large is your team now? I just um rest, rest, rest recently in, embarked in all this. Um and it hasn't been two months. Uh right now I have a team of people that I'm actually talking throughout the United States right now. Uh from LA to Colorado uh, to Atlanta, here in Florida. There's a lot of people that have some great minds and they have great resources with them. And whether it's um, you know, a a person to have their own podcast, a person to have their own church, a person to have uh, their own establishment. So we are talking. So right now I have a, a, a telegram when I, I have about 14 people there and I'm interacting and we're sharing ideas and they're giving me feedback and what we can do, what we can add, what we can um, you know, maybe remove or whatever. So by that happening, I realize so much more can happen. You know, I went from uh, you know, I set up the the whole TikTok, like there's a new TikTok, like a month and a half, two months. I set it up and I'm almost at uh, 2000 strong followers on it. Okay. And my, and my posts are getting like 35, 30 to 35,000 um, viewership. And I find that to be amazing because it seems like there's a lot of us that's w awake and are seeking out each other. And we're looking for, um, where, where's my people at? Where's my people at? Oh, he's right there. Okay, boom. Okay, come with me. Come with me. Okay, I'm um, coming with you. Come with me. Okay, we're coming together. And it's beautiful. And a lot of us need direction. And they don't mind taking guidance or you know, guidance being given to them because if 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 they would do something greater, something greater would have been would have been happening. But they see us to be a force because we have an actual document. Of, of guidance, the, the, the constitution. So a question for you. You have a following on TikTok and I'm sure other social media platforms. You're driving them to Telegram? I'm driving uh, traffic to Telegram, yeah. but I'm also driving them to um, my new website for it, which is BijaliNation.org, which is a community. There we can be more free in what we say because uh, it's not filtered or designed to take away from you uh, content-wise or just what you say-wise. So I did that, 
and I'm going to be slowly building that where I mean, to, to the people that's going to go from the social media to the telegram to the nation's website, uh, where it's a community and we can share videos, we can share documents, information, um, just, you know, continue building on the energy. Spell the website for me. Be jolly. B E J U L I nation. Be jolly nation dot org. Yeah, sign up. What's that one quick win that I can look for? I'm in the group. I'm moving around. What's that first quick win I can look for? Your first will be to getting that education, understanding what your constitution is, it. and reading it and going through that. And you have to be energized by that because that document in itself is energy. And if it resonates with you, you will have the power. If it doesn't resonate with you, you may you may not necessarily belong here. Got it. On the learning, at some point, I'm going to set up financial uh, stuff there. So like uh, business acumen, entrepreneurship, uh, financial literacy, um, learning about um, life insurance, cash value life insurance, learning about uh, certain things, uh, whether it's crypto, uh, certain things that's going to propel us. And if we actually do something together, uh, we can get further. But individually, uh, if we have a formula for Bajali and Bajali is moving the same way as you're supposed to move, um, that's got to be the blueprint. The blueprint will be the way we move. And as we move and we are successful, you have no choice but to be successful because there's a blueprint for it. Got it. Thank you for everything that you shared. I believe the audience got a mouthful that they're going to have to go back and pause and play to get everything in there. This is going to be your lifelong passion. And I'm sure you're going to delegate some things to people. For those who are not business owners, is this something that they should get involved in? It's for all of us, because as an individual, I could be a business owner. I can have a nine to five. I can be a guy that's freely in the ocean fishing. I could be in the forest living like a jungle man. As long you're carbonated and, and you have some melanin in you and be part of a marginalized group. This is your world and your opportunity to move things along. I believe that this is a lifelong thing, like as you said, and it's do or die. Because I've been waiting for years upon years to see who our next Marcus Garvey was going to be. That's Malcolm you. X. That's you. And and uh, Martin Luther King, another Harriet Tubman. You know, no, another James Baldwin who's out there, you know, who's out there being outspoken. We need people that have a mouthpiece to to champion what we're about, to speak on what we're about. Uh, we all need to do our part. And I'm asking you, being a brother, being a king, and being a god, to join our forces, to okay. be with us. And I want to create a board, our board, our committee. And it starts with you and me Got right it. now. Well, I, I like the direction that it's going in. Financial literacy is definitely something that I can always stand behind. And I can tell you many stories about that. Being in the insurance industry since 2015, I've had the opportunity to speak to a few families and to see the disinformation that they adopted as true. And having the opportunity to educate them, I enjoy that. And your platform appears to be going in that direction. I see it more than just uh, people with melanin. I see it as those that are miseducated and they are now realizing that something just is a little off and they're ready to seek out those answers and they can come to you for those answers. So yes, that's something that I believe that I would like to be a part of is making a difference in people's lives that prepare them to create happier homes later. By the way, do you have any questions for me um, before I go? Yes, how did you uh, get into the field of uh, information technology? And what is your goal for yourself that you want to uh, be able to create for yourself, your family, and your legacy? My original why, how I got into electronics was sitting in front of my front door 
when I was seven years old, I took a cardboard box and folded it in an accordion shape and started hitting on it like a typewriter. Because the floor is concrete, it sounded like a typewriter and caught the attention of everyone in the house. And that was the spark that set me on the journey of learning. I remember days of watching black and white TV and with the rabbit ears. And when the rabbit ears didn't work, I became the antenna. Sam, could you just turn? No, no, no. <laughs> Stay right there. Don't move as everybody else enjoys the show. And I'm a statue with a, with a metal rod in my hand. And that inspired me to learn. I took apart my first computer. Here in Miami, my aunt was a school teacher and she used to have this PC with five and a quarter floppy inch disk. I went, I took it apart, put it back together and it worked. After mm. that, I was in the industry. You be tickling with things, huh? You, you, are, you are natural. They put me in school where I learned Pascal and Fortran and just kept adding languages from there. I got to the point where I don't do that work anymore. I manage the people that do the work. Recently, I found myself getting into platforms such as high level, such as 5PC Global, getting into their background, talking to their programmers. I've been fortunate enough to make that into a business. I started out repairing TVs and VCRs. That's how I got into technology. That's beautiful, man. Um, where's your book, man? That's not like a good read. <laughs> I have a story and it's coming and you're going to love it because it resonates with you. Yes. Yes. I appreciate that. Thank you. I know that you're using high level and that is something that I use a lot. So congratulations on moving to that. I see a lot of business owners adopting that and building a community is the one thing I keep telling every business owner is now is like, listen, you got your customers, but aren't you tired of one night stands? <laughs> right. You know, don't you want more than just they come in, they buy, they go, and you now have to go on the hunt to get more customers. Why not build a community where your existing customers now begin to bring more customers? This brings your ad spend down. Wouldn't that be a beautiful thing? Yes. You know, they, they think about it. And I said, imagine this. Imagine a thousand people in your community and you're providing enough value. We're going to cut this short. <laughs> We're going to continue. Absolutely. Right. It was a good one. I appreciate your time and opportunity here. Thank you. Thank you.